1952, my wife and I sat down and started thinking about our lives and what we were gonna do. Uh, I'd married her when she was 18, and I was 20, and uh, we finally decided we wanted to do something, work on cancer. Now, my father and mother had never finished high school. I never knew doctors. I didn't know anybody with cancer, and I decided I'm gonna do this. <clears throat> so from the hills of Tennessee, I worked in textile mills and I did all sorts of jobs to support myself driving bread trucks. And then uh, somebody told me in this big textile mill I should go to Johns Hopkins. I had been rejected to all the graduate schools. So in 1957, I headed to Baltimore, got a job at engineering. Never had a course in engineering, don't ask me how I did that. And at night, I volunteered to wash glassware and sweep the floors in the chemistry department. And I worked my way up, and then I finally got a job in the, as a technician in the hospital. And then I went on to get all these professorships and things. And I ran the cancer center at Hopkins in 87 without an MD. The most important thing is that I'm a mentor and teacher, and I've had the wonderful opportunity of many of the great leaders in the field having worked with me and studied with me, like Bert Vogelstein, and Bill Nelson, and uh, the Isaacs brothers. These are all big leaders in the field. And uh, that's one of the things I'm proud of. In the research aspect, uh, my wife, when I first started out, I had no idea what to do in cancer, no more than you did. And she said she'd had a pap smear. And I said, how does that work? So they take a little swab, they take things, look at the cells, and they tell me whether I have cancer. And I said, you can look at one cell and tell me it's cancer? Then I found out that the only person that can tell you you've got cancer is a pathologist. And what they're looking at is the shape of the cell. So if you take a Coke can and crunch it, when they see it crunch like that, that means that it's cancer. Variation in shape called pleomorphism. So I said, what causes that? And they said, that's your job. So I said, okay, I will solve that. And so I spent the next 40 years working on that and I discovered a structure within the cell that organizes the nucleus and organizes the DNA. In 1998, okay, I was the president of the AACR. Marge Foti spent a long time as the head of this. And so working with her and, and trying to bring some new frontiers together, what we decided to do was to reach out to the public. And with a lot of people's ideas, we started setting up forums for advocates, people with cancer survivors, and inviting people in to inform the public of what was going on. So we did a lot of TV and things around and a thousand people poured out. <clears throat> and this became a big thing now. So Saturday before the meeting, we have all these people come in to be informed. We're leaders in these advocate groups. And that was increased awareness and understanding. It was a great thing. The other thing is most important. We decided to try to increase funding for cancer. And the result of that, with a lot of people involved, was we doubled the NIH budget over five years. And this brought in young people and excitement. Progress in all of medicine comes from research. Everything from the polio vaccine to smallpox to cancer to x-rays all comes from research. And so this is the organization that's headed up the fundamental research related to cancer. And the idea is how to speed that up and transfer that into humans. And that's what's going on. It's really an exciting period. And the AACR, the American Association of Cancer Research, has led this thrust. <laughs>